how you feel right now. And I promise you, however dark and scary the world might be right now, <laughs> there is light. All it takes is one bad day to drive a person insane. This blood and fire will rise the dark night that your city needs. You left the army for this city. It grows on you. A, B, N. It's headphones nailed! Headphones Neil here, back with my review for the TV series called Gotham, based on the um, comic of a similar name, I believe. Um, I think the comic was called Gotham Central or something along those lines, but they basically created a five-season show on Fox to cover what we see at the GCPD, the Gotham City Police Department, to um, give us a different perspective of how they handle crime in Gotham. And I enjoy the premise and because I am a Batman fan, I watched the show based on those requirements and I want to say that originally the first couple of seasons worked or was were pretty good. I enjoyed the tension and the drama, the personal interactions, a lot of stuff from uh, Jim Gordon's point of view as a detective and lieutenant. So all of that was good. Um, so to finish up the background of it, I kind I stopped after season three, just because for me season three felt like it was getting a very repetitive. So in kind of the comic book world, no one really ever dies, and they I want to say they mimic that very well but the story didn't feel like it progressed anything in season three so it kind of felt like a sludge to get through so i kind of fell off after that never really got around i think i might have started on season four but never finished and so since i saw the um full season or the full show on netflix i decided to give season four and five a watch to see how they rounded out the show and a kind of form a final dis a perspective on the show based on all five seasons. So now that I've gone through it, I want to say that overall the show is pretty good. It starts with um, Jim Gordon as a detective in the GCPD, his personal relationships and struggles, his ultimate rise to captain and commissioner, which to me was kind of rushed, but the story was handled well enough to show his uh, show that final um, transitions from captain to commissioner um i like the for the most part i like the rise of the villain so you know penguin and riddler um ultimately joker um i know there was bane but i want to say that his story was not really developed enough and to me i think that's really the only thing that could have maybe changed a little bit um towards the end because that could have been tied better to the introduction of Batman in season five. And also because season five was about half as long as the other seasons, that's also why it feels like the Bane story arc was rushed. Um, but I did like his introduction and his general story arc, but that was probably the only um, character that was rushed. Um, I like the interactions with Carmine Falcone as the boss of the, or the original boss of the um, criminal underworld. So all of that was good, and but like I said, season three kind of fell off for me because it kind of felt like a repetition of season two. But then once we get into season four, is where all the various characters kind of start to shine and grow a lot, especially between um, Penguin and Riddler, um, Barbara Keane, um, especially with her um, interactions with Rachel Ghoul, and um, ultimately his daughter, um, I, and I already forgot her name, I think it was Nisa Al Ghul, but basically season three was one of those things where it's, it kind of, it was a transition season I want to say between two and four, but then a lot of those um, story arcs and progressions could have been moved into seasons two and four and season five could ultimately have been a complete season to have uh, like as a mid-season finale have um, the return of Bruce Wayne and the introduction of Batman and have the rest of the season um, be the rise of the relationship between Batman and um, 
Commissioner Gordon and having Commissioner Gordon not retire. So the show for me could have been done a little bit more tightly and been finished in four season and seasons and had the same net effect for me. So while I'm not disappointed overall, that's kind of where it fell apart for me. Um, I think I want to say that, like I've been saying for the past, uh, for some recent reviews, that um, COVID has some part to, to play in that in season five. But for me, season five wasn't all that bad. It's just that I think because of COVID, it was cut short, and they could have. Um, elaborated on that relationship between Batman and Commissioner Gordon that much more, why they rely on each other, the predicament that Gordon is always in, which would have been a good build, um, building exercise there because he's always in a predicament that he doesn't like and he has to make do with what he's with where he's at. And of course the relationship between him and Bullock was very good in this show. Um, so all in all, if I, I want to kind of say that I recommend the show um, because I probably give it a solid B, about a solid 85%. It was mostly good. It showed it focused like it should have on um, the GCPD and um, Gordon's rise through the ranks. Um, it shows the um, the progression of um, Bruce Wayne, Selina Kyle as Catwoman, Tabitha, um, and Butch as um, Solomon Grundy, and all all the various characters were good. Um, but for me, you don't really need to watch season three, kind of because, I, and this is probably where my memory is failing a little bit because and there might be a little bit of that carryover because I want to say that by the end of season two approximately is where Carmine Falcone, Falcone left the show um, because he was kicked out of the city and then he makes a partial return by season four um, but potentially he was also out in season three um, as part of the Fish Mooney storyline and Penguin trying to take over his gangs and all that so that's kind of why watching season three might make sense but when you're if you do when you're watching the show and if you watch all five seasons, uh, for me just know that going going into season three is where it's gonna feel like kind of uh, slow, kind of slow to get through just because it starts feeling very repetitive. You know, characters are being killed off, but then they're brought back, and it's it feels like it's a mess. But then when you get into season four, they hit their they really hit their stride, and it all falls back into place as far as. Um, having good uh, character development and um, being able to show that character, those character interactions really well. And then you, of course, for me, the growth of Bruce Wayne as far as, like Selena said in the show, that he was a scared little boy when his parents died, but then you see his growth when he leaves um, and ultimately comes back 10 years later. So that all works very nicely. Um, and then if you kind of want, like for me, the other thing that I noticed too, and why I like seasons four and five the best is that when they have the Joker story arcs, there's one particular episode, and I actually didn't note the episode name or number, but there's a very, there's this particular episode related to the Joker where they almost perfectly recreate, um, the Batman film with Michael Keaton, the first one with the Joker, and they have the guess that the Joker wants to release it, um, have drive everyone insane. And there's that one episode in season four where they recreate that perfectly. And I actually liked that episode really well. So when you get there, if you're a fan of that Michael Keaton Batman um, film, those films, then you'll particularly like that episode. And then when you get into season, the end of season four and into season five, a lot of it becomes very reminiscent of the Dark Knight trilogy with uh, Christian Bale because they have, for example, the bombs going off by um, the Joker as well and the uh, blowing up of the bridges and the city's cut off from the rest of the world, which is very Dark Knight Rises. I, I forget which one was the one with Heath Ledger. Le I think it was the second one, maybe the third. I would mix them up, which is why I say that, but you can get that much of a vibe as well, so they recreate that here as well. So you get more of that from the uh, GCPD point of view versus the Batman Bruce Wayne point of view. So all those all that did for me was make me want to rewatch the um, Dark Knight trilogy because you do have a scene where Bruce Wayne is going into the snow-capped mountain, which we see in the Christian Bale trilogy. So 
all in all, the season, like I said, starts off very well and then ends very well. It's just in the middle, it gets kind of sluggish, so that's it makes it kind of hard to watch. Um, but that is all for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, thoughts of your own, what you like, didn't like, uh, maybe something I missed, um, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, so subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. Um, and of course, um, as far as upcoming episodes, if you're a supporter on the Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01, you get um, early access to what's coming up. So patrons already have um, the schedule for upcoming episodes and what reviews are coming up next after that. But thanks for tuning in to this particular episode and supporting and subscribing to the show. And until next time.